Welcome to Advanced Data Analysis 2 with me, Eric Earhart, Professor of Statistics at the University of New Mexico. In this video, we'll continue Chapter 11 on Logistic Regression, covering an example from the U University of New Mexico, Oops. the UNM trauma data. So in the early 90s, we collected over 3,000 patients that were admitted to the trauma center, and these are you're only admitted to the trauma center if you are in seriously bad shape. Car accidents, um, uh, bar fights, <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, for each patient, the attending physician recorded the person's age, their revised trauma score, so this is sort of an assessment of, of how that person is doing, their injury severity score, which is a compilation of where you have injuries all over your body and how severe they are, and whether the injuries were blunt or penetrating. So blunt is sort of like a, a car crash where you get slammed into, and penetrating is when you got uh, when your skin is is broken, as in a gunshot or a knife wound. And ultimately, whether the person survived their injuries. So we'll have a serve, short for survival variable. It's zero if they did not survive, and it's one if they did. And about 10% of patients who are admitted to the trauma center eventually die from their injuries. So this is a sort of very serious business. Um, to drill down and get more detail on some of the scores we'll be looking at in this example, the injury severity score is an overall index of the patient's injuries, and uh, it's based on approximately 1,300 injuries cataloged on the abbreviated, abbreviated injury scale. It's sort of like the DSM-5 for bodily injury. The ISS can take on values from zero, where that's a perfectly healthy patient, to 75, which is a patient with three or more life-threatening injuries. Uh, the ISS is a standard injury index used by trauma centers throughout the US. The RTS, on the other hand, so, so that's ISS, goes from 0 to 75, healthy to severely um, life-threatening injuries. The RTS, the Revised Trauma Score, is an index of physiological injury and is constructed as a weighted average of the incoming patient's systolic blood pressure, respiratory rate, and Glasgow coma scale. The RTS can take values um, in the opposite direction. So it's 0 for a patient with no vital signs, basically someone who is dead, right, to 7.84 if you are perfectly healthy. So um, the ISS goes from 0 to 75, increasing with injury, and the RTS um, increases uh, to a healthy person or decreases with injury. So in the early 80s, um, it was proposed that a logistic re regression used to model the probability of a patient's survival using um, RTS and the ISS and the patient's age, and that's what we're going to do. Um, other ways to model this data include survival analysis, where you model how long it takes for a person to either be um, discharged from the hospital in a relatively healthy state, or until the, an event occurs, meaning death. So we're going to develop a logistic regression model with uh, some of these variables. So let's drill down a little bit more because it, we, we need a little bit more information for, to understand the code that we'll see below. Uh, the data on the number of injuries for the nine body regions are also included in the database, and we're going to use um, these variables um, in our modeling as well. So these nine regions um, all have an S associated with them for score and the letters A, B, C up to J. And sort of going from top to bottom, um, A is for your head, B is for face, C is neck, D is thorax, that means sort of your rib cage region, E is your abdomen or your stomach region under the, but sort of between your rib cage and your hips. F is for your spine, G is for your upper extremities, your arms, H is for your legs, 
and J for your skin, including like burns, that sort of thing. So we'll read this data set in. I'll go ahead and uh, take a quick look at it. You can see, um, I'm sort of zoomed out a bit right now, um, how many how many columns there are. There's There's a bunch of columns. It's because we've got all these scores for your head, your face, and so on, um, as well as the injury severity score and so on here at the end. So I'm going to close that and go back to the notes. So that we're going to read that into a data set called trauma. And uh, in trauma, we've, we've got um, basically A1 through A6 for different types of injury uh, for the head and and so on for the uh, nine regions of the body that we're considering. And we're going to look at the A3, th A3 through A6 and add those up for a total score for each uh, part of the body. So we'll, we would need to dive into the um, more details here, but this is a, a sensible decision. Okay, so we'll have a variable for each. So those are all the variables in the data set right now. We've just uh, created these last few by adding up the A3 through A6, for example, to generate AS. But let's just uh, keep the variables that we need. So we need we, we want the person's ID number, just in case we need to identify them later. We want uh, their whether they survived or not. We want the scores for each of the body regions and this is sort of a shorthand way of of doing this you can name the variables and if you put a colon in between it will grab those consecutive columns in the data frame and then also ISS through prob okay and prob is actually um, a variable that will end up creating later on basically our estimated probability of survival Actually, this may come from uh, another paper, these probabilities. So let's take a quick look at uh, plot of the data marginally for each variable to see whether there are differences based on whether that person survived or not. So I'm going to reshape the data and uh, plot all of the variables in facets. So these first sets A down to J are all those bodily injuries. Uh, let me go down to the bottom so we can read the horizontal axis. It is for your survival. <laughs> uh, zero is that you did not survive and one is that you did survive. Actually let's start at the bottom work up. Why not? So for age it looks like for so the ages on the vertical axis and those who those people who are younger and I'm you know a lot of the, we've got 3,000 data points split between and we have tons of data I'm basically going to be looking at the medians and the means which are the red diamonds in the just quick comparisons here so it looks basically that younger people are more likely to survive because the mean for the surviving group is lower than the mean for the um, people who did not survive. Uh, the revised trauma score, remember that uh, higher is better, so uh, that is clearly very much the case here. Uh, blunt or penetrating, so um, blunt is zero and penetrating is one. And these are actually pretty close to each other. It looks like uh, penetrating one, this is slightly higher um, on the people who did not survive. So that's some a little bit of evidence that maybe penetrating injuries are more likely to kill you. Um, the Let's see, I see ISS. I think we just really want the ISS. Um, as that decreases, uh, you're more likely to survive. And that's because zero is the perfectly healthy person here. Uh, and then we have the different body parts. So for the head, certainly um, if the more severe your head injury, the more likely are, you are to not survive. Uh, face doesn't matter very much. CS, 
um, DS, what was that? Let's see, thorax, is that right? Um, looks like the more severe your thorax injury, the less likely you are to survive also for your abdomen, your stomach. Um, F, G, H, these are sort of very small differences, though more generally speaking, the higher the score, the more likely you are to be in the did not survive category. All right, so let's use, use the general linear model, generalized linear model, to fit a binary logistic regression and perform a backward elimination or some sort of stepwise um, selection and see which variables are important for uh, predicting the probability of response. All right. So I'm going to use the GLM function. I'm going to put the survive on the left and the did not survive on the right. And this is we've got this score for every individual. And so we've got two columns here. And there's either a 1 in the left-hand column and a 0 in the right if the person survived. Or if, if the person did not survive, then there'll be a 0 in the left and a 1 in the right. So, so the, the 0, basically 1 is serving as the total sample size, and 1 minus survive gives us uh, the did not survive number. So we've got all of our body parts in there, A through J. We've got the injury severity score, the RTS, revised trauma score, the age, and the blunt and penetrating variable. We're going to fit a binomial logistic regression and then perform stepwise regression and allow the direction to be both. So, so this allows me to both, we're going to start at the full model because that's, that's the full model right here and we're going to start at that linear model object and then we're going to do both. So we'll start at the full model, we'll start doing backward selection, but we allow ourselves to add variables that we've dropped in early in the process. And trace equals zeros means that we're not going to get a ton of output, just all the decisions that were made. So here we uh, start by dropping head, face, and I'm not going to remember all the, the body parts here, but basically we drop lots of the body parts. And that's the end. Let's see, so the only one that was retained here was E, which was the, th let's see, thorax, abdomen. Abdomen is the stomach. And so here we've got our final model. When we look at the reduced model, we've got ES, that's the abdomen, the injury severity score, the revised trauma score, the age, and either blunt or penetrating. And when we look at the output here, we see that Conditional on all the other variables in the model, each variable is is also important. Uh, we've got a residual deviance that we can check the lack of fit test, and that's what we do here. And this is the largest p-value you'll ever see. Uh, basically, we don't have um, significant evidence for uh, lack of fit. In fact, this suggests that the, the model fits the data quite well. So we can read off the estimates from the regression model and uh, fill out what our regression model is. And so we can plug in for any individual, say a new individual who comes into the, the uh, trauma center, we can plug in what their ab abdominal injury is, whether it was blunt or penetrating, and so on, and estimate what their probability of survival is. All right, let's interpret the signs of the coefficients as well as the, uh, the odds ratios. And I'll do that just by coming up here. So let's see if, if these make sense to us. So as the abdominal injury increases, this is a negative sign, so the, the probability of survival will decrease. That makes sense to me. 
As the in injury severity score increases, the probability of survival decreases. As the revised trauma score increases, remember this is an inverse score, then the probability of survival increases here because the higher the score, the more healthy you are. As you age, your probability of survival decreases and blunt and penetrating. Blunt is coded as zero, penetrating one. So when, when you go from blunt to penetrating, we have this negative score and so your survival probability decreases. So we also have this additional output here. Um, we can output those model coefficients as well as confidence intervals for them. But if we exponentiate those, then we can interpret the odds ratios. So let's give some, I'll give you a couple examples of interpretations here. For uh, blunt to penetrating, um, relative to blunt, when you have a penetrating injury, you are half as likely, basically, 0.5, to survive. Uh, for every year you, you're older, you're 95% uh, less likely to survive. For every unit increase in your revised trauma score, you're over two times as likely to survive, and so on. So you can see how I'm, it's basically like a multiplicative probability of survival, these odds ratios. All right, um, this next section describes how to how we can use the model to make predictions and how we can improve our uh, the quality of our predictions and I'm going to decide to skip this section for the time being and uh, possibly come back to it later in the semester if there's time uh, some of the uh, some of the ideas in here are about uh, classification and whether you make correct predictions or not. And we, I discuss the concepts of sensitivity and specificity and uh, false positives, false negatives, false, uh, sorry, true positives, true negatives, all those sorts of things. If you look up classification on Wikipedia, it will give a pretty good description of these ideas. And so I encourage you to read through this section if you are interested in prediction. So that ends this example. We'll come back with one more video to talk about one of the most famous uh, classification problems in logistic regression analysis.